السلام عليكم. السلام عليكم. Okay, we're still in Surah Al-Baqarah, the Surah that Allah's Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam said that is full of barakah. And it destroys all magic and voodoo. Right, it destroys all magic and voodoo. And voodoo is magic, which is used in different words to make people understand the, the harm of it because they've used the word magic like it's a good thing sometimes. And it's not a good thing. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. And also, it's called the Quran in brief. It has the whole, every subject that's going to be covered in the Quran is first talked about in Surah Al Baqarah in brevity and then expounded upon in other places in the Quran except for the story of Baqarah. Okay? That's not repeated. No, there's two stories of Baqarah. But one of them is not repeated more than what it is done in this surah. Hence, this surah is called Surah Al Baqarah. Okay? So pay attention to that, inshallah ta'ala. So we went through a whole bunch of things so far. We went through explaining about the hearts. We went through explaining that yeah, about hypocrisy and how it is the focus that, that gets a lot of people astray through following their desires and trying to take vague and ambiguous statements and turn them to follow their desires. And that hypocrisy starts off with someone having the opportunity to believe and then because of what they have in their heart, their desire and love for something else, they start to have hatred for other people who don't love what they want, okay? So that's why they have hasid and jealousy towards those persons. One person has in his heart one thing, he wants it to be this way. He sees someone who doesn't like it that way and opposes it and having fun and getting the ni'mah of Allah, they start to hate on them, right? And we say that hating starts to express itself in five ways until ultimately that person works with shayateen in order to give that person hasad and evil types of thoughts. Uh, we spoke also about the evil eyes. One of the beginning, first thing that they do is give them the evil eye which is to hate and want that nitma to come from them, okay? And we spoke on that when guidance comes. People have an opportunity, and they will not be able to understand the guidance in the Qur'an until first and foremost they accept with full certainty that this book, the Qur'an, is from Allah. If they reject that, if they have any doubt about that, then Allah says, يُذِلُّ بِهِ كَثِيرًا he leads a lot of people with the Qur'an astray. And he gives a lot of people guidance with the book. And he doesn't cause anyone to go astray through the Qur'an, through the examples in the Qur'an, these things, except those people who are open sinners and fasiqeen. The definition of that is those people who break their promises that they have with Allah. Those people who don't follow the Sharia. And they do opposite of the Sharia. Okay? And then what my Amar Allah will be he and you salah what you've seen. And they cause corruption in the earth. And we've mentioned that corruption is division amongst the believers. Anybody who tries to divide the believers, this person is causing corruption in the earth. So you know, unifying the, the Ummah is one of the objectives of the Sharia. Yes, everyone should be worshiping Allah the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to. And there's enough room in that for everybody to have enough flavor and individual way of expressing creatively and showing their, their own selves according to the sunnah. Then we mentioned a whole list of examples of what happens to people when they were given the opportunity to get da'wah, sorry, to get guidance, okay? And they were very arrogant, okay? I'm sorry, I missed the point. Then we mentioned what happened with Shaytan. How Shaytan came, and what is Shaytan? He was jealous over man, right? Yeah. So his jealousy, because he wanted that position, right? In his own idea, he thought he was the best one. So he expressed two sins. And these two sins are like the foundation for every other sin, right? One of them was what? Abba, and the other one was? Stephanah. Stephanah. He was refusing and rebellious, right? He didn't do what he was told to do. And, and he, he was, took Adam's right. And he took rights. So the first one, Abba, he refused to do an obligation. Okay? He refused to do something that was obligatory upon him. And then his stepbrother, 
He tried to take something that wasn't his. So he refused to give someone their rights, which is the right of a law to be obeyed, and he tried to take a right that wasn't his. And we keep mentioning that this is the foundation of most of all the sins people make. There is another foundation to sins, and that's what Adam did. And he did that out of following his desire. Okay? So we see that sins, all of them, are going to be based on three fundamental principles. One, refusing to give a right to someone. We call it Abba, to refuse and be rebellious. Abba. Don't worry about the Arabic word. Uh, I mean, learn it, but understand the concept. To refuse, to resist. These words are better. Not better, stuff for Allah. For us to understand it, right, refuse and resist. Okay? To explain Abba. What's stakbara? Stakbara is to become arrogant, to see oneself bigger than what they actually are. And it's expressed by trying to take a right you do not have. Take something you don't have a right to. Okay? Which means you're taking someone else's right. And the third one is hawa, desire. Whoever follows his hawa, faqad hawa. Whoever follows hawa has been destroyed. And then after that, we find that we have example after example of Allah showing us how when people got guidance, they received guidance, they responded in a very arrogant way. They responded with refusal. They kept following their hawa. And this is in all the examples of Bani Israel. And we make the note that we're not mentioning these so we can look down on Bani Israel but to memorize these examples so we can see that we're not doing the same thing. Because in each of the examples that we showed, that Allah shows us in the Qur'an, we see that we're doing the exact same thing, some of us or all of us, right now. Each one of those examples. So when we look at those and those people say, oh, look how bad and stinking the bad Israel is. No, look at you. Look how we're doing those exact same things. We, the Muslims, are doing those exact same things today. And now we, move, we moved on to show where people play with words, okay? How certain, the, the Jews and the Christians play with words and deal with magic as opposed to dealing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we see how that began. Playing with words, giving us words like mi'raj, and they say mi'raj. Say, oh yeah, it's a, he really, it wasn't a mi'raj from the Arabic word of going to make the ascension up to Jannah and seeing Allah. Rather, he was in the desert. It got so hot for him, right, that it was a mirage, a delusion due to the heat. And then they play with this word, and now we use it, not realizing we're disrespecting our own deen, and in fact saying a word of kufr after iman. And using words like whore is a place for hurul they said, yeah, they're, all their women are a bunch of whores. And we use this word. When actuality, a whore is a beautiful thing, and we want all of our mothers, sisters, and daughters to be hoody. They change the pronunciation and try to present it as a bad word. No, we establish it as a good word, and we don't use their words. And Allah taught us, don't say their words. Don't accept their words you know, openly and blindly imitate and copy them in their words. Rather find more suitable and appropriate words. وَقُولُمْ ذُرْنَ وَاسْمَعُوا And pay attention. Listen. Not to follow them. And there are many words that we have, like hell, like verse, like many different words that we use in the Qur'an and use in Islam that we've taken from Kufar and we don't even know the names and what they mean. Like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friggins Day, you know, Fraz Day, I should say. Like January, February, March, and all these other words that we use that are pagan in their asl, in their foundation, and are statements of Kufar and disbelief. 
and we don't need to use them because we have Islamic church. And if we had any izza, honor for ourselves, we would use and enforce our words and not use their terms. And this is when we say, you're following your way. And your way has some honor. And not blindly following the way of the kuffar. This is in the chapter in our aqidah of wala wal bara. Associating with the believers and disassociating with those things that come from kuffar in our society. And then we moved on from there to show some examples of what was wrong from their aqidah. When they, that they followed their amaniyah. They say that they are the loved ones of Allah and His sons. They say that they're only going to Jannah. Right? And what do we say if they say they're the only ones going to Jannah except for a Jew or Christian? What do we tell them to do? We tell them to, to wish to let them to die. Yeah, wish to wish for death then. Okay? Hope for death then if it's just for you. Call it something in Duninas. Fatamanna will mount. Allah tells them hope to die then. If you're really truthful. Or how to burhanakum. Bring your proof. But they will never wish for death because they know what to expect, really. And they have no proof. And then we mentioned that they said that Allah has taken a son, subhanahu. Rather, everything in the world and in the heavens belongs to Allah. Kullu law qanitun. Everything is obedient to Allah. And obedience is two ways, right? You either openly obediently or you will be forced to be obedient. When Allah says, you know, if he orders something, what does he say? Kun fayakun. Be and it is. Be a human, we became human. Be dead, we die. Go to sleep, we sleep. Wake up, we wake up. Die and go to the grave, we're dead in the grave. Resurrected, we are resurrected. Willingly or unwillingly, we are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, ma'am. Res what does resurrection mean? Resurrection means that like you wake up in the morning time after you went to sleep, right? Even if you want to stay in the sleep, Allah made you come back to this world, right? And wake up this morning, right? Okay, did you know what time you was going to wake up? No. Did you know what moment? Did you pick the moment you got your eyes were going to open and you were going to come back to consciousness in this world? No, Allah made you come back into this world. Just like no matter what you do, you're going to fall asleep. You're going to, your body's going to say, because your body is obeying Allah. Your will can say, I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to do it, then you'll fall down on your face. Because Allah willed you to fall asleep at that moment. And you may say, I want to sleep more, I want to sleep more, but you can't because Allah made you come back to this world and wake up. That's resurrection. And Allah gives us this night to fall asleep and the morning time to wake up to remind us that we're going to die one day. Our life is like one day. Okay? At the end of our day, we fall asleep. At the end of our life, we're going to die. And when you sleep, where do you go? Hawaii, where do you go? You go to dream world, right? Can you do a lot of good things in the dream world that you like to do? Can you fly? You, you don't fly in your dream? What do you do? Oh, you don't always remember what you did? You never remember? MashaAllah. But you know you go someplace, right? Okay. When we die, we're going to go someplace too. It's called the Barzakh. And in that world, it's like similar to the dream world. It's a different dimension for us, if we want to use that term a different reality that we'll live in for a period of time. And just like you leave your dream world and come back into this world, and you don't know how long it was, right? It may seem like a short time. It may seem like a long time. And then you wake back up, and you don't even know what time it took. When we die and we come back to world, we won't know how many years it was. We won't know what time of years it was. And that's going to be the resurrection, and it's going to be the last day. Does that answer your question? So now we're at the point where we're still talking about those things. Allah says in the Quran, "A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim." Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. 
Allah says, and no, wallahi, lan tarda. It's not and never. Wallahi, by Allah, never tarda an kal yahudu wa lan nasare. Never will the Jews and never will the Christians be pleased with you. Hatta tattabiya millatahum until you follow their religion. Millatahum. Now this teaches us a particular principle. Because earlier they said, the Jews said, وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودُ لَيْسَتِ النَّصَارَ عَلَى شَيْءٍ وَقَالَتِ النَّصَارَ لَيْسَتِ الْيَهُودُ عَلَى شَيْءٍ وَهُمْ يَتْلُونَ الْكِتَابِ They all recite the same book, yet they both say that the other one is not following any proper, proper way. No real guidance, right? But here Allah is teaching us that they have the same religion. The Jewish religion and the Christian religion is the same millah. Okay? He didn't say millatahuma. The, the two of their religions are millatahum. Their religion is one religion. And they can never say to us that we're not on anything because every action in the world has an Islamic rule. In our deen, we know it. We have a hukum for every act that you do. They don't. And it's known to us. We sleep a certain way, we go to the bathroom, we walk, we dress, we everything a certain way. And we have guidance on that. So they can't say we're not on anything. Because we say, and the proof is this in the Quran, and the proof is this in the Sunnah. It's established and clear. And most of us know these things. So it says, Qul inna hudallahi huwa al-huda. Qul means all of us should say this. Our response to this statement, to this mindset. And there's a lot that we can take from here. Allah is giving us here with this first statement, and never will they be pleased. It's letting us know something. Never be tricked by these people. If you think that they like you and they're pleased with you, you disbelieve in Allah. Or you're ignorant of what Allah has said here. Because Allah says, Allah says, and wallahi, this is tech key. Never, len, never will they do this. So if you believe they are doing this, you have a mental problem. And we find, you know, sometimes for, for, for Negroes in the United States, it's easy for us to recognize these types of things. Why? Because we've never felt wanted in this country. We've never been liked. You know, and we know that. Is that correct? No. You may be allowed to be here, but you're not wanted. Okay? And we know that. And sometimes it gets our ire when we see people come from other countries and they act like they don't understand that principle. Well, like we're wrong because we do understand that principle. And then after 9-11 and after some of the other things, they start to come around and say, well, look, basically, we told you so. Okay? But still, this mentality is not a rejection of our advice. It's a rejection of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us. Okay? Has told us. And when there is this, oh, it's this word here, this statement, and it's a natural, whatever law makes a statement, that is a natural law that is unbreakable. Okay? It's in place. So he says, never will they do that. Allah says, Kun, be and it is. So Allah said that, right? His statement is the reality. Okay? So we can live in reality, al haq or we can live in bath and falsehood. And we pick up a double crime. One, we disbelieve in what Allah said. One word. You disbelieve in one word in the Quran, you disbelieve in the whole Quran. Just like you reject one prophet, you reject them all. You reject one, uh, one angel, you rejected them all. Right? No. This is what Allah teaches us in the Quran where he says, those people who have a problem with Jibreel, then they have a problem with Mikael too. And they got a problem with Allah. And any of his messengers. So this is rules that we're learning here. And he says, say to these people, in he said, the guidance of Allah, it is the true guidance. 
Okay? This is what we're supposed to say. وَلَا إِنِ اتَّبَعْتَ الَّذِي وَلَا إِنِ اتَّبَعْتَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ بَعْدَ الَّذِي جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ مَا لَكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ وَلِيٍّ وَلَا نَصِيرٍ Allah tells us also, so then if you follow their hawa, their desires, so it shows that their millah, their religion is nothing but desires. It's not following anything. It's backing up the statement that they're not established on anything. Because Allah called their religion ahwa'ahum. Okay? If you follow ahwa'ahum, their religion, their hawa, after what has come to you of knowledge and ilm, what do we say? If you know something, it's called banner, right? Ali Mashay, a banner. Something became clear to him. And Allah said his ayat are? Bayinat. Right? Clear ayat. Meaning, there's no way you cannot understand it. The way he created it. And I mentioned earlier there are three types of statements in the world, right? Three types. There is a logical statement. And what is a logical statement? Um, a, statement that the mind cannot a statement that the intellect cannot reject. Yeah. Say it, guys. A statement that the intellect... No, a logical statement is... A logical statement is a statement that the intellect cannot reject. You were born from one mother. You were born from one mother. Can your intellect reject that? No. no. Two men got in a car accident. One died, one did not. Can your intellect reject that? Yeah. No. No, because it happens all the time, right? Yeah. Then there's another type of statement. Researchable statement. Say it. Researchable, Researchable statement. statement. That's a statement that you can investigate and find out whether it's true or false. What is a researchable statement? A researchable statement is a statement that you can investigate and find out if it's true or false. Okay. There is air in tires. There is air in tires. Can you research that? No. No. There is water in tires. Can you research that? No. no. Investigate it and find out whether that's true or false? So that's the other type of statement in the world. Either a statement is logical or it's researchable. And it's a third type of statement. A legal statement. What is it? A legal, legal statement. statement. That is a statement from the lawgiver. What is a legal statement? A legal statement, legal statement is a lawgiver. statement from the lawgiver. It doesn't have to make sense to you and I. It just has to come from the one who has the right to legislate, okay? For example, in the United States, the lawgiver is the government. True or false? True. Okay, we all accept that, right? Yeah. Yeah. The government has the right to legislate, right? Yeah. They say, you have to stop on the red light and you have to go on the green. That's a legal statement, isn't it? No. Yeah. Does it have to make sense? No. Why can't we go on the red? I think red is the way to go. Can I go on red? No. Because I will be violating the right of the lawgiver, right? No. He determined that it's green that you go and not red. I don't have to see why you choose green over red. I, don't have, I can't debate that. The one who has the right to legislate made that law, okay? Likewise in the Quran, you will find those three types of statements. Most of the statements will be logical. And that's the beauty and the miracle of the Qur'an. That in these writings, and Allah knows everyone's intellect, that in the Qur'an, when you recite it, there are so, most of the statements are statements that the intellect cannot reject. Then there are those statements in the Qur'an that are researchable, that you can investigate and find out if they're true. And then there are some legal statements that whether you understand how or not, it is a fact because Allah has the right to legislate. He has the right to determine. Like this one. Why is it that way? You can research it and find it to be true, right? 
Yeah. It may make logical sense to you. It may not. But it's a legal statement, too, because Allah stated this is the fact. This is what's going to happen. He created the world. He made it like this. Does that make sense, guys? No. no. And so it says, and also, and if you follow their God, their their hawa, their desires, after you have gotten knowledge, let you will never find any help. You will never find from Allah You won't find anyone to help you, to advocate on your behalf, and you won't find any help whatsoever. That is a legal statement, right? He made a law. If you follow, if you cross and you run through the red light, you're going to get a ticket or arrested, right? Yeah. You're going to lose your right to drive. Allah says if you follow their desires after you have knowledge, then you will never find anyone to advocate on your behalf, a wali. Yeah. Okay? To argue for you, yawm al qiyamah. To come and get your rights or do something for you. And no one to help you. Allah has laid down a law. You accept it or reject it, don't make a difference. That law is in play, and it will affect you. Does that make sense, everyone? Yeah. And I'm trying to make us understand the nature of the Qur'an. Allah says, Allah says, the ones who have been given, have been, we have given them the book, the Qur'an. This means, yatlunahu means they follow it in the way it's supposed to be followed. Okay? Now it's a yatlunahu. People think that it just means reciting it. No, it means yatabiruhu. They follow what the book has told them to do in the haqqatilawati, in the proper way as it is its right to be followed, meaning you go as far as you're supposed to go without going too far, and you're not doing too little, giving it justice. Okay? That's what it is. And Allah says, these are the ones that actually believe in it. Those who follow. So Allah's laid another law down here, right? He's laid a statement that's a fact. The people who, once they receive the book, the Qur'an, and they recite it, and they follow what is supposed to be done in the Qur'an, the way it's supposed to be done, these are the only ones that actually believe in it. So he's stating something here for us to check out. If you really believed in the book, you would follow it. If you don't, if you're not following it, then you are not a person that actually believes in it. Say what you want to say with your mouth. Okay? Those who follow it, they're the ones who actually you mean wanna be. What'd you say, Mutoba? Mm -hmm. What is the question? The question wants to know what about ambiguous statements which have more than one meaning. What about statements that are mutashabih? Well, Allah says in the Quran there are certain things that are mutashabih. Okay, they may be muta they may be mutashabih to some people, but they're not mutashabih to other. Allah dina rasik wa rasikuna fi ilmi yaquluna amana bihi kullu min indi rabbina. Allah says in the Quran that there are some statements that are crystal clear, right? And there are other statements that uh, have some ambiguity to them. Okay, and some people may understand them more than one way. However, the Qur'an has become tibyan with detail for everything. But those people who don't understand those statements, if they have grounded knowledge, they will say, all of it is from Allah. Okay? I believe in it. All of it is from Allah. That's what's upon a person when they individually run into an ayah that has some dis doesn't make so much clarity for them. But that's why they're supposed to go to the people of knowledge. Because when it goes to the people of knowledge, we explain each ayah. Every ayah in the Qur'an is, is explained in a way to be used for our benefit. And there is not things here that we're going to find that we can't use. Okay? The whole Qur'an is for our benefit and usage. Okay? So that's what we're going to focus on in that. And if it could mean something more, then we say Allah knows best. Because, of course, what we've been given of knowledge is only a little bit. 
And I hope that answers the person's uh, question. So Allah tells us here, وَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ And whoever disbelieves in it, meaning whoever rejects it, whoever rejects what? Refuses to act on it, okay? Doesn't apply it, then these are the people who are losers. So Allah has established another rule here, that the people who follow it are the ones who actually believe it. And those who refuse, to follow it, they have disbelieved in it. And that, they are losers. Okay? These people are losers. Then Allah says, Ya Bani Israel, al-kuru ni'mati allati an'amtu alaykum.